Hey, uh, thank you for joining me again. Let's have a look at all of the different kinds of supplies that you need when you are making these um, no sew quilted baubles. Just going to move these boxes to one side and I'll introduce you to what's in them in just a moment. So we've already talked about the fabric in a previous video. These are the foam balls I use. Um, you can see that they have a dimply bit there. I usually use that to find the centre, uh, which is where I start with pinning the fabric pieces on. I'll talk about that in the video when I actually make some of these for you. Around the, ed uh, around the middle, there's where the two bits have been joined together. And then on the other side, there's another dimply bit. And I think I'm right in saying that these are three and a half inch um, baubles. I will put a link in the bit underneath the video for where I bought these because I got quite a good deal on those. You can get smaller ones and you can get bigger ones. Uh, I did find somewhere that did some egg shapes. Um, so I did this egg one for Easter. And I did also do the Christmas tree kind of shaped one. I um, can't remember where I got that, but I'll put a link if I can. The next thing that you need is, are the rulers. So I've got this lovely non-slip ruler for when I do the cutting. Um, I'll show you the cutting in a separate video. Oh, I'll do this one if we get onto it. Um, I do use an ordinary ruler as well. That comes in useful for when you are measuring the differences here. When you're measuring down to put the next row of squares on. I have my trusty scissors. Snip, snip. Uh, I have my very long quilting ruler, which is what I use when I'm cutting the big strips of fabric. And then in the first of my magic little boxes that you saw, a treasure trove. Um, this is a new to me rotary cutter. Uh, I did have this uh, so easy rotary cutter and you can see it's very well used. This one over time started to really stick even with changing the blades so I'm not sure if I've done something wrong with it when I've been changing the blades but it's still a good cutter. This one however is now my favourite um, and I always remember to leave the safety on when I'm not using it so that it can't hurt me <laughs> by jumping out at me and snapping me. So we have our fabric cutter. We have our pins. These are standard sewing pins. I get these in boxes of a thousand uh, from Amazon. Um, again, I'll put a link down below. Sometimes you do end up with, I don't know if any in the bottom of their bent pins. Um, and I just put those to one side. And when you're buying a thousand pins at a time, I think these are about $6.99. I'm not going to quibble over one pin here or there. A tape measure. Um, in this, I probably will mainly talk about measuring in inches, but obviously you can do the measurements in centimetres as well. This is really useful for finding distances from the centre point down to the middle. And again, for measuring these bits, because of the metal bit there, you can't get accurate measurements. So sometimes I'll start on a different measurement line and use that. Um, where's my narrow one? Here's my narrow one. Excuse me, I'll eat Genovi, guys. Um, so on this one, you can see that some of the measurements were actually quite tiny. And some of them don't actually fall between the things. And I have another sneaky tip, but I'll share that in another video. So measuring tape, spare blades for the cutter. I always have spare blades because you never know when it's going to run out. Those are for the so easy and those are for... Um, that one. When I first started doing this, so much pressing, pressing of the pins into the foam 
gave me sore fingers and I ended up with quite um, calloused fingers. So I did buy some of these thimbles from Amazon and these are quite good because they will expand to any size. Um, the reason I've got so many is because I do offer people classes in learning how to do this. Uh, I don't always use this nowadays because I've found other ways to do it, but it's quite useful sometimes if you're pressing through thick layers of fabric and foam. Then we have lots of lovely different colours of pearl pins. And these I use to embellish the baubles. Um, I don't put them on everyone, uh, and sometimes they're not even that visible but they do add a nice extra feature and they're pretty to look at, let's face it. So as well as all those things, there's also lots of ribbon. And when I say lots of ribbon, I mean lots of ribbon. I get most of this from um, Hobbycraft for a pound, pound a reel. So it's nice to have the different ones. And you can see I've got velvets and satin ones, thin ones and thick ones. And even some nice Christmassy glittery metallic ones. I've also got some printed ribbon. You might recognize that from um, a bauble that I made of part of the Inspired by Art Forests thing. And then um, this one's from Tesco's, a well-known supermarket in the UK, and it says Let It Snow. I uh, haven't used that one yet, as you can see. By doing the bows at the top here, it's actually better to use this if I can get the texture up for you, this cross grain ribbon. And I've bought quite a few different ribbons trying to work out what's the best thickness. And to be honest, I tend to just go with whatever matches the bauble. Um, and sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. Uh, but you play around and you use whatever you like. So those are some of the supplies that I use when I'm making these fantastic fabric baubles. In the next video, I will be showing you how to cut the fabric. So thank you again so much for watching. Bye.